The Super Bowl matchup is set in Glendale. Fantastic. Does include the Vikings. Allegedly includes the Philadelphia Eagles as well as the Kansas City Chiefs. And there's something about both of these teams that the Vikings are not like. All right, so the Vikings are missing out on a couple of things. Notably, looking in the trenches. So what the Chiefs and Brett Veach, as well as the Eagles and Howard Roseman, Howard, have done, have built a bully from the inside out. And that's how you have to win in the National Football League. Uh, and with the Chiefs, so they nailed it in the draft with Creed Humphrey as well as Trey Smith. Uh, they s- spent up on jo- jumping Joe Thune as well as traded for Orlando Brown and looking to pay him. On the defense side of the ball, Chris Jones is – Pretty easily the, the most dominant interior defensive lineman right now. And also they spent a first-round pick on jumping George Kalaftis as well as uh, traded for Frank Clark a couple seasons ago. So uh, As well as Kalen Saunders, one of my favorite guys uh, from a couple years ago. So they have definitely built out from the trenches. And for the Eagles, offensive line, one of the best in the game. Uh, Malata, they got Lane Johnson, uh, the, the human false start. <laughs> At both tackles, and while in the inside, they got Kelsey. They also have Cam Jurgen sitting on the bench, man. Fantastic. Uh, Similo, as well as Atlanta Dickerson, uh, the pride of Florida State, as well as Alabama, who a guy that I loved uh, from back in the day. And then, of course, Sweat, Hargrave, Fletcher, Graham, and Dominican Sue, Jordan Davis, by the way. It's just. It's just amazing. It really is amazing. So if you can control things up front, you can control things on the perimeter. You can control things everywhere. So things are just easier when you have some mass in the trenches. Uh, THICC. So the Vikings need to get back to having the meets because they did not have it this year. They just didn't. Now, need to take out Derisaw and Brian O'Neill. They're the best uh, tackle duo in the National Football League. But Ezra, I love him. But... He's he's a left tackle playing guard right now. Uh, Garrett Bradbury, he greatly improved this year. He's above average, but that's not good enough. Ed Ingram got pushed around even though he does have a great anchor. And then the defense side of the ball. So I don't even know if the Vikings are going to stick with a 3-4 or 4-3. doesn't really matter. But the interior, for whatever reason, was just soft. And I, I can't explain it because you have Daniil. You have Dalvin Thompson. You have Harrison Phillips. Uh, and you have guys like Bullard and Blacklock and Tonga uh, who are going to hold their ground. But... Still, the Vikings defensive line just gave it away, gave it away, gave it away now. And uh, for the offensive line, Kirk Cousins, even though the offense was top five, Kirk had a career high in pressures and sacks, and they weren't all from Derisaw and O'Neal. So it was that interior. Vikings were 26 in rushing yards per carry at 4.1, which is kind of astounding uh, considering the talent at the running back position, but the Vikings simply just could not get a consistent push. They're 29th in third and fourth down uh, under a yard, which... You know, part of that is Kevin O'Connell's play calling. Part of that is unable to get a yard or an inch when you really need it. Defensive line, they're 22nd in rushing yards per carry, 4.5. They average 34.4 yards per drive, 28th. Again, not all of that is on the defensive line, but it does all start and end up front. They allowed 111-plus rushing yards uh, in 14 of 18 games, which is ridiculous. Five and a half sacks from the interior, uh, so taking out. Uh, Wanham and Patrick Jones and, and uh, Zadarius and Daniil, which was last in the NFL. Uh, 28th in points, 31st in yards, and 21st in red zone. But other than that, they were really, really good. So something's got to change. So Something has got to change. Uh, uh, again, you, you look at the, the Chiefs. You look at the stupid Eagles. Like They are built a, as a bully from the inside out, and it really isn't a mistake why they're here. And also, you, you look at uh, the Bengals, the way that they're constructed. You look at the – well. They had a number of offensive line injuries. Uh, you look at the Niners, the way they're constructed. That's how you win. Like That's how you win these big boy games in January. But the Vikings, they have to have a big-time shift. Like, like They have to retool, and they may have to change a lot of things. First off, I would trade Ezra to a left tackle needy team. I would not bring back Bradbury. I would make Ed Ingram compete. Like, basically, the only two guys that I would put as 10-pole pillars are Darisaw O'Neal, and probably Daniil. If you're going to go with a four-man front, I, I would bring back Daniil Hunter. I would extend him because he's one of the superstar edge rushers in the game. Harrison Phillips is obviously going to be around. I would try to bring back Diesel Dalvin. But other than that, you, you got to build a bully. And you have to have a platoon uh, on the defensive side of the ball. For offensive line, you're replacing Ezra, replace uh, potentially replacing um, Bradbury. I mean, there's options at free agency. I, again, this is not uh, – this is just – Back of the envelope math, just guys that are going to be available that would fit the bill. And, you know, I, I hear what you're saying. It's like, well, Nate Davis isn't a scheme fit. Screw the scheme. We're over the scheme. Yeah, because remember, 
I really love me some, well, Creed Humphrey was a physical freak and he was going to fit in wherever, but I love me some Trey Smith coming out of Tennessee. Now he had some health issues, but that seemed to be uh, uh, taken care of you know, with the heart stuff. But it was like, oh, he wasn't a scheme fit. Do not care. What, what I care about is not having my offensive lineman, A, step on Kirk Cousins' foot, or B, not able to get a yard when you need to get a yard. And also, since he can push the ball carrier now, like how, how are you not even picking up these fourth and inches? Whatever. But in the draft, there are some nice T-H-I-C-C thick uh, interior offensive linemen. Defensive side of the ball, I would bring back Dalvin Tomlinson. I would look into guys like Sheldon Rankins. I would look into into paying Deron Payne all the money in the world because you got to get something. And the Vikings' lack of interior pass rush was astounding this year. And, no, I – you know – Looking at Brian Bruzzi, looking at Broderick Martin, looking at Jacqueline Roy, looking at uh, Cameron Benton. like a, a lot of these guys are really good. This is a really solid uh, defensive interior class. So, uh, I mean, the options are going to be there. But the Vikings, they're going to have to accumulate some picks. It, it's possible. But, uh, again, looking at what the Eagles have built, Howard, they, they invest draft picks. They invest capital. You look at how the Chiefs have built things. They invest draft picks. They make trades. Uh, they sign Joe, Joe Thune to the highest uh, free agent guard deal in NFL history. So they get after it. And guess what? They're here. They're here. And the Vikings have had the off season for the last couple of weeks. So it's unfortunate, but they got to get back to building a bully up front. No excuses. Uh, anyways, let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once we'll put the work, put a little something in the Venmo, but to next time skull production value.